From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. There is so much that we want to share with you today and uh, how Iran, this is serious, could get the bomb overnight, overnight. And then the Sunni Shiite war. Oh, that's within the Muslim faith. We're going to be talking it's about coming. all. Yes, it is. We're going to talk about all that and so much more. And we were so delighted to receive a wonderful, heartwarming card from Pat and Shirley Boone. Remember that great singer, Pat Boone? And he wrote a note along with it, dear brother. We watch you and Rexella so often, and thank God for you. The days are short, and Jesus is coming. I'm praying to finish my last gospel album. I'll call it The Legacy, to encourage believers and for those left behind to hear. My, oh, my, what a letter, heartwarming letter. And uh, by the way, when Legacy comes out, we need to get it. I love to hear him sing, Jay. Oh, Pat, we're going to push it for you, so let us know when you have it, because what a blessing for you to say you want to leave that behind for those who've been left behind and were not in the rapture. That makes a lot of sense and blesses my heart, because that's what I believe and preach. But I remember the great time we were together. It was the great association of the national religious broadcasters from America, Canada, and many parts of the world. And you led the music and did a masterful job as always. And then President Ronald Reagan spoke and then I spoke, calling Christians together in unity. Never forget that day. And after, you know, President Reagan wrote me and said, you've been hearing me talk about Armageddon and I believe it will come in our generation. And he said, I want to thank you because you brought that light to my eyes as the President of the United States. Praise the Lord for all of it. Oh, that was wonderful, Jack. Well, you know, friends, our most recent video is the one Revelation rumblings. We've been saying how important it really is, and there it is. Signs that Jesus could come today. There are 15 on there. Well, there are so many more in the Bible, but we dwell on 15. And Jack did such a thorough job of explaining all of it in about 15 minutes. And then we went on and explained it in detail. It was wonderful, Jack. But right up front here, would you please just sort of give us a bird's eye view of what we did on that wonderful video, Jack? Now, I'm going to shock you in my new video, Revelation Rumblings. If you will master the first 12 minutes, you'll be able to talk to anyone about all 22 chapters. And I've made it so simple, you can understand it. Now, I just want to give you a little sampling. First of all, there was just a great university professor that took the book of Revelation apart, and she didn't even know what to call it. She called it Revelations. Wrong! <laughs> revelation 1-1, one, one, the Revelation not revelations, revelation singular of Jesus Christ. Well, there are those who say, you can't understand the book of Revelation. You can't. Then we have a God that makes promises he can't keep. Verse 3 of that first chapter, and blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of those prophecies and keep those things which they read and hear. If you can't know what it's about, you can't keep it. God knows you can. And what's it about? That revelation of Christ, his revealing on earth. Verse 7, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. Chapters 2 and 3, the history of the seven churches from Christ's day right up until the moment we hear come up hither of Revelation 4.1. And we go home to meet the Lord in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Now, as we move ahead, chapters 6 to 18, covers the seven-year period of tribulation, 21 judgments. 
There are seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. At the sound of the breaking of every seal, one of the seven judgments comes, and then the next seven come when the trumpet is blown, and the final seven come when a bowl is tipped. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we are right at that hour. In a few minutes from now, I'm going to show you why we won't be here for any of those judgments. We're going up. We're going to escape it all. Yes. Now we get to chapter 19. And this is what we prayed for centuries. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6.10. Now Jesus comes in Revelation 19.11. Regally on that white horse. And the armies in heaven follow him. That's you and me who've been raptured. Now we're returning seven years later. The Lord would cometh with ten thousands of his saints, Jude verse 14. And he comes as the King of kings and Lord of lords, verse 16, to rule and reign for a thousand years, Revelation 20 verse 4. Then he's recommissioned and his reign here is forever and forever on earth. People say, oh, I'm afraid of that. Why? They shall see his face, the face of Jesus, Revelation Chapter 22, verse 4. What a blessing. Now get it. The holy city is going to descend. There's never been anything like it. Jesus said, go to prepare a place for you. What's he been preparing for 2,000 years? If you think this world's beautiful, wait till you see what he's been preparing for 2,000 years. Wow, praise the Lord. And then, of course, it's the end. Not of the world, but the end of all the weeping and Everything that's going on, Revelation 21, 4. God wipes with all tears from the rise, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now, that's just the beginning. You can get 12 minutes of that, and you'll be able to explain every single chapter of the book of Revelation. Oh, Jack, you did such a great job on that. You really did. Uh, you must get that video because he did a great job. The book of Revelation is it opens up in front of your eyes, and the first thing that I always think of when I think about the book of Revelation is that just prior to all the bad stuff happening, we see some of it already. It's happening where people are killing each other and all the rest. Well, there's going to be a great, great event that happens just prior to that time of tribulation, and it's called the Great Escape, preparing for the rapture, the next event on God's prophetic clock. Now, Jack, very quickly, would you just explain the rapture? You know, Pat Boone referred to that in, in his little message to you, Jack, those who are taken. Will yeah. you explain it, please? Well, that's my book, and I've got 200 pages on why we are not going to be here for the seven years of tribulation. And we begin with Revelation 3.10. God says, because you have kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of testing which comes upon the whole world. It's 21 judgments. He didn't say, I'll keep you through it. God knows everything. And if he wanted you to believe we were going to go through it like post-tribulations teach, he would have used the word dia, through it. But he used the word ek, out of it. Well, how can that be possible? First Thessalonians 4, verses 16, 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Christ is the first fruits of the resurrection, and he came out of that grave bodily. And a few days later, when he ascended, you can't see his spirit, but they saw his body go up because it's a body that comes out of those graves, even for all of us believers who've gone to sleep in Jesus. As soon as we die, absent from the body, present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Those spirits come to get their bodies for a seven-year period, and the marriage takes place in heaven, Revelation 19, 7, and then we return with him to rule and reign. We have to have bodies to rule and reign because no one can see spirits. Now, can I prove that this was a body Jesus had? Yeah, he ate in it, as you know. Acts 1.9 proves that he went up in a body. Why? It says, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you in heaven shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go. If it's a body, you can see it. If it's not... And it's a spirit you can't. 
That's very plain. Now, what happens to us when we're raised out of those graves? 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now we're the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, sight, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The bodies are coming out of those graves, and we're coming back after the marriage of Revelation 19, 7, as already said, in bodies to rule and reign with Jesus. Oh, my. That's exciting, Jack. It really, really is. Now, you know, friends, during the tribulation time, after the rapture, we're at home with the Lord. What takes place? What is going on? on the earth. What will happen? Well, this is uh, opening our eyes here. Hamas minister, first Israel, then the world. The ultimate goal of Hamas movement is to establish Islam worldwide. How Iran could get the bomb overnight. Well, building a weapon takes time, but buying one does not. And here, where are the nukes and are they loose? Yes, they are. And they're loose there in Pakistan. In other words, they're saying we could buy them from them. Iran's nuclear program designed to finish off Israel, Hezbollah MP says. They've got quite a goal there. And here you see this very serious Netanyahu, Bibi's challenge with Iran nearing the nuclear red line in Syria at boiling point. Netanyahu has his hands full. Take a look. Mr. Netanyahu warned Iran obtaining the nuclear bomb would trigger nuclear proliferation throughout the Middle East, turning the most unstable part of the planet into a nuclear tinderbox. Now, this is an address to the United Nations General Assembly. And here you see the United uh, Nations Ambassador Bolton. Now, he was our former ambassador there. Obama's deal with Iran, risk nuclear arms race. Whoa. In other words, he's saying if he did this with Iran, we are really at risk. U.S. threatened with heaviest damage in history. And here is one that surprised me. Syrian militants threatened to take war to U.S. and the U.K. Now, some of these young men were born in the United States, some in the U.K., and they say our next targets are the U.S. and U.K. Amen. Going on, Russian support of Assad upends peace talks. Oh, Jack, and Egypt and Russia hold historic talks. Now, of course, they're going to go together for that great battle. Now, I'm going to ask Jack to quickly tie this all together, please. Oh, man, I got my hands full, Rexella. First of all, Jesus said there should be wars and rumors of wars, Matthew 24, 7, Mark 13, verse 8. And then one of the greatest battles in history is Armageddon of Revelation 16, 16. I'll tell you, we're living in perilous times now. Who are all the combatants? First of all, we have Russia, and here is Russia mingling with Iran. Don't touch them. Don't touch Assad. Don't touch Egypt. And they're going to come and help make the peace in the Middle East. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's Ezekiel 38 and 39. Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, all cities in Rosh, Russia, of that chapter, fights the war of the latter years and latter days, verses 8 and 16. They are defeated. Ezekiel 39, verses 1, 2, 12, and 13. Next comes the oriental hordes from the east, Revelation 16, 12. It's the greatest battle in history, especially when the oriental armies come, far worse than when Russia was there. And that's Revelation 9, 14 to 18. Loose the four angels bound in the great river Euphrates to destroy a third part of mankind. The number of the army was 200,000, 1,200 million. And by these three was the third part of men killed, fire, smoke, and brimstone. It's going to be the bloodiest battle in history. And Arabs are going to align themselves with Russia and China. And that's uh, Daniel 1140, Egypt, Isaiah 17, 1, Syria, Ezekiel 38, 5. That's Iran and Iraq. And of course, that in the Hebrew is Cush and Put. And that's Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia. And then in Psalm 83, verses uh, 5 to 7, we have Moab. And that is Jordan. And we have Gibal, which is Lebanon. The entire Muslim world is going to be the most horrendous battle in history. And it'll be atomic warfare. Listen to this. 
Psalm 97, 3, a fire devours before them. Isaiah 66, 15, the Lord will come with fire. Ezekiel 20, 47, the flaming flame shall not be quenched. Joel 2, verse 3, this is the Russian army, a fire devours before them. They're being pushed back to Siberia in the prophecies. Blood, fire, pillars of smoke. Zephaniah 1, 18, the whole land shall be devoured by fire. Malachi 4, 1, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And then Revelation 8, 7, a third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned. And I already quoted Quoted Revelation 9, 18. By these three was the third part of men killed, fire, smoke, brimstone. Oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yes, come amen, quickly. Amen, amen. Thy kingdom come. Oh, Kate. Now, did you know there are several sects within the Muslim movement? Of course, there is the Shiite and the Sunni. I'd like for you to take a look, please, at this. The Sunni-Shiite war and Obama and the Sunni-Shiite war. Now, there are two sects fighting each other within the same religion, Jack. Will you tie that together? Obama, too. I believe we could see a war before Armageddon between the Sunnis and Shiites. It'll be the bloodiest thing you've ever seen among the groups within Islam. And here we have a pope calling them a religion of peace and love. But listen to me. The Sunnis say we take the father-in-law of Muhammad for our leader, and the Shiites say we take his grandson, Ali Hussein, for our leader. And that's what all the killing's about. But listen to me carefully, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here is why the greatest war in history is about to happen. Read that headline, mm -hmm. Rexella. And here you see it, Iraq changes. Prayer direction, Kabbalah, not Mecca. No wonder they're having a war between the two, Jack. For hundreds of years, five times a day, they've been bowing to Mecca. And now the Shiites say, no longer we're going to change it, and we're going to bow to Karbala. Wow, this is going to really be troublesome in the very near future. I wish I had Bible verses now, and I do, to, but the time is gone, ladies and gentlemen. Remember those two words, be ready. Oh, I trust that if the Lord were to come today, you would be ready. If you're not, you can be by opening your heart to the Lord. Would you ask him to be your Savior? That's why he came. He came to be your Savior. Will you pray that wonderful prayer with Jack of saying, Lord, come into my heart, Jack. Oh, let's calm our hearts. What an hour to be alive. You say, oh, this is frightening. No, Jesus is going to come and stop it all and set up his kingdom. Come quickly, Jesus. But are you ready to meet Jesus? Jesus, you died, shed your blood for every person that's ever been born on this earth. You shed that blood for me, Jesus, to cleanse me, to wash me, to save me. And Jesus, I'm accepting you this day as the one who can do all that. And I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior today. Make me ready to meet you in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I trust that you prayed that prayer. There's my address. Please write and let me know. I'll send you this whole booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. It will help you in your new walk with the Lord. Now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive Revelation Rumblings. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Revelation Rumblings. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Oh my, oh my, I trust that you will make that call. There's the 800 number, there's the address. Make it right away. If you want to understand what's going on in the world, you really need to have this in your home. So call us right away. We've been talking so much about the coming of the Lord today, what's going on in the world. I want to leave you with this very good thought. Although the outlook may be bleak, the uplook is always bright. We'll look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>